On May 14, 1891, the tobacco concession granted to the British colonialist by Nasser Din Shah the Shah of Iran was revoked. This concession was revoked after the great Islamic leader, the late Ayatollah Said Muhammad Hassan Shirazi, famous as the great Mirza, banned the use of tobacco in a religious verdict. On the anniversary of this historical event, our colleagues at Marja at Global Network have prepared a report of the tobacco movement that I invite you to watch it. The Great Mirza Shubazi, the Reviver of Islam The eminent Ayatollah Sayyid Muhammad Hassan al-Shubazi, also known as the Great Mirza, was born in 1230 AH in Iran. This prominent religious leader and Islamic jurist is the forefather of the eminent Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shubazi. It is widely acknowledged that the famous Tubaku Edict is the greatest achievement in the life of this religious scholar, who established one of the ever greatest movements against the colonialists who aimed to take over the Muslim world. In 1306 A.H., Nasser ad Shah, the Shah of Iran, granted the British Imperial Tobacco Company the exclusive rights to produce, sell and export all of Iran's tobacco in return for annual royalties to him. The move was intended to give the Shah much-needed financial help. However, the tobacco crop was widely considered as a valuable national asset by the Iranian populace, who depended greatly on its revenues and selling its rights to a foreign company elicited unanimous outrage. In 1309 A.H., Ayatollah Sayyid Muhammad Hassan al-Shibwazi issued his famous tobacco edict, declaring that using tobacco was akin to waging war against the 12th Imam. May Allah hasten his reappearance. All across Iran, farmers refused to grow tobacco, merchants refused to sell, and servants refused to serve it. Eventually, the Shah was forced to cancel the agreement. The Mirza Shubazi saved Iran from Burton, the greatest colonialist in the world, who had aimed to take control of his country economically and culturally and weaken the beliefs of its people through propagating satanic beliefs. Years later, the eminent Ayatollah migrated to the holy city of Samara in Iraq. Meanwhile, the enemies persecuted his family members and had his son killed. Following these incidents, a number of official dignitaries from Burton, Turkey, Germany and Iran came to him asking for his permission to retaliate against the enemies. But the eminent scholar forgave the murderers of his son. With that said, it is safe to say the reason he was so beloved and respected by the people is because he followed the footsteps of Prophet Muhammad in his behaviors and lifestyle. <laughs>